I want in a man. For sure. You know. Mm. Um, but if he wasn't, I don't know. Yeah. I'd probably be selling. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm thankful. Oh, I'm make glad. sure you make sure you say you 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 say what you sell like because people he don't want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you selling. <laughs> Settling. Oh, oh, okay, Settling. Okay. Settling. Me too. Not okay. selling. Oh, let's correct this real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Scratch that, okay? Mm, damn, Q. Baby, you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy versus everybody podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shaw. Shaw vs. a Bite Podcast, episode 182. Got a special guest, man. This is her, uh, her first podcast experience, so you already know she's about to blow up and shit. But uh, she got a lot of hats, man. She a teacher. It's your first year teacher, right? Yes. Yeah, dude. I do my research. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A teacher, a dancing pole instructor, uh, <clears throat> owner and creator of the uh, Best You Studios. And Correction. Be the best you. Be the best studio. you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got yeah, be the best you studios. And um also uh sip and stilettos, you know what I'm saying? And she do a little singing too. A little bit. I don't know. We should we ask her to sing, y'all? Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we got uh Candace uh Bridges in the building or uh Candace the coldest, you yes. know, wherever you wanna go by. How okay. you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I appreciate you uh, you know what I'm saying, coming on the show. Yes. I reached out to you, I didn't know if you was gonna respond back. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? What you did, and we made it happen. We did. We did. How you feeling, though? I'm feeling good. I'm a little nervous, but I'm good. Oh, sure. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> but uh, we start everything with salute me, salute me while I'm here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we wait for people to pass away before we give them their flowers. Mm -hmm. But it can't be an easy answer. It can't be relationship. It can't be your mom and dad, brother and sister. It got to be somebody out of that easy answer who wouldn't expect the, the flowers. Um, Let me see. So no, no family. I mean, it could be family. You just can't be that that immediate family, brother, sister, mom, dad. Okay, so I'm gonna say she's like a sister to me. We're not related. Mm -hmm. Um, her name is Taylor. She goes by Taylor Brittany. Okay, yeah, yeah, she rap right. No, she actually dances. She's a dance instructor. Okay, okay, okay. Teaches dance. She do her own heels classes. Mm -hmm. But my sis, she is that one. For sure, for queen sure. of heels. That's her. Yeah, Taylor was... Brittany. Follow her. Taylor Brittany. All right, all right. What's up? What's up? What's up? Now, I know we ain't supposed to salute kids, but the only reason I'm going to salute my kids because Friday was my daughter Riley's birthday. She turned three. Mm -hmm. And then Wednesday was my son's birthday, uh, Shaw Jr. He turned uh, 17. He old as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had him early. In <laughs> so, now, it's crazy. Like, I'm, I'm feeling old because at the age he is now, it's the age his mom was pregnant. Oh, wow. So, now I'm really talking to him like, hey, bro, like, you got wow. to chill out. Like, <laughs> you got plenty of years of women, man. You know yes. what I'm saying? Just focus on sports and, and school. So, I want to salute them. And um, like I said, I did this because a lot of times we wait for people to pass away. Mm -hmm. But I do want to send my uh, condolences to the Davis family. A dude that I used to coach with passed away. Uh, I just found out he passed away on Thanksgiving. Oh wow! His name is uh, Lamont uh, Davis. So I want to go ahead and send his family some love. And you know, what I'm saying I'm sorry about uh, you know the losing of your uh, loved one. But uh, we don't just dump, jump jump into uh, what you do. Okay. We just talk a little bit beforehand. All right. But uh, it'd be Christmas in, um, what, a couple of days? Yes. Give me a Christmas story of yours, good or bad. Hmm, Christmas story, good or bad. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say, I'm very blessed. Mm -hmm. So all my Christmas is always, I always have the most mm -hmm. from my family. Okay. So, but let me see. I remember one time going downstairs, getting up on Christmas Day, mm -hmm. and usually the Christmas gifts is like right in the living room sure. under the Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went downstairs, me and my siblings, and it was nothing. <laughs> yeah. It was nothing. So I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh-uh. I knew I was good this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess my parents was trying to trick us that year, and then all of a sudden they actually put it in the computer room. Okay. All so right. we opened up the door. All the gifts was there. Woke so, up a little nervous. Yes. Yeah, I always do this time. <laughs> Um, I had to be about like nine or ten. Oh yeah, you, know? you was hurt. Yeah, yes. you, you probably went back and started crying. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure, that, that's a hurt feeling. <laughs> Man, my Christmas uh, memory is re seventeen, realizing that Christmas was over for me. Mm. Like my brother, <laughs> my brother was eleven, and that was the first Christmas that I woke up like just like a regular person. Like wow, <laughs> <laughs> it was like Merry Christmas. Here go some socks. You know, what I'm saying my mama, she still gave me like a hundred dollars or something. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you grown and you're like. <laughs> It was over. I'm just watching my brother, like, you know, say, open his gifts up. Fast forward. Now I'm doing it to my son. Like, hey. Oh, wow. It's over, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I give you a couple of dollars, but 
Hey, you can help your sisters and, and brother open the, the gifts, but it's a, it's right for you, son. <laughs> You're a grown man. <laughs> we wear the same size clothes. They got I'm good on you, dog. <laughs> but no, shout out to uh, Christmas is and this like the the holidays and this time of year can always cause like depression with uh, yes, you know what I'm saying a lot of families because. You know, it's hard out here trying to, you know, keep up with bills. And if you're not making the money that, you know what I'm saying, you should be making. Right. It's yes. kind of tough on, on on families and stuff out there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, the, like, the year almost over. Talk about this year and how it's been for you. Ups and downs, personal, business. Like, how it's been? Um, so, let's see. Well, this is actually my first time owning my own dance studio. Mm -hmm. So, because before I used to always, like, rent out other dance studios to host my classes, but now mm. actually having my own building, mm. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. It's, I <laughs> learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah. You know, especially them times where I do have the moments where I do want to just be like, you know what, forget it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm done with this. Yeah. But it's my clients and my students who actually, like, keep me going through this time. Because, mm. you know, you do have those ups, the mm -hmm. slow times, mm -hmm. the good times. For sure. But, I mean, my clients, they keep me pushing. For sure, they for keep sure. keep me pushing. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. What about personal? What, how has your been personally like, for you? Personal. Yeah, I got to get in your business a little <laughs> bit. A little bit. Um, I would have to say it, it's been good. You know, life do be life in, though. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. It, it definitely do be life in. Mm -hmm. um, especially this actually being my first year going into my field teaching. Mm -hmm. I am in the DPS system. Mm -hmm. This is actually... The school system I grew up in, so yeah. it's totally different now. For sure, no, for totally sure, totally different. These kids, man, <laughs> god damn, these kids, <laughs> they little wild boys. They, they are, they are, yeah. and sometimes coming home, you know, I do be a little sad sometimes because mm. of the education that they're not receiving too. So mm. it, it be, it be hard. But if you don't mind me asking, if you can, you know, explain, tell it, uh, where do you teach at? Um, so right now I am at Davison Elementary Middle School. Mm -hmm. So it's right on like Davidson and Six Mile area. Do you want to keep it like elementary, or you want to eventually move on to high school? No, just elementary. <laughs> <laughs> What's, uh, just elementary. No, no middle school, just elementary. Yeah, cause my That's wife it. is a pre K teacher, and oh, I'm like, wow. she only want to move up past that. Yes. She's like, I'm good. Like, yes. And that's a lot. Them pre K? Mm -hmm. Yes. Whew. Yeah. What's well, been some challenges for you? You know, this is your first year uh, being a full time teacher. Um, I would say, being that things have changed in the system, like I knew growing up back in the day, mm -hmm. growing up back in the day, you know, if you wasn't doing good in a certain grade, you would have to stay in that grade mm -hmm. before you can move forward. But now they don't do that. Yeah. They just move these kids forward. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like right now, I teach fourth grade. I have some students in my class that should be in first grade. Oh, wow. Like that's how bad yeah. it is. Yeah. So yeah. they only move them for if the parent will keep them behind. If the parents mm -hmm. say no, let's keep them. In now, this I heard that uh, like once you get to third grade, if you're not reading at a certain level, they can't pass you past the third grade. Is that wrong? Or mm, that's wrong because they doing it. <laughs> Damn, that's <laughs> they, mad. So yeah. where do you think that come from? Do you think that come from like the parents or the the schooling? Or like, um, ain't you no know, activity for them to do at the school to you know push them even more. I would honestly say it does start at home, mm -hmm. you know, the type of parents that you have, you know, because we need the parents to help us out because mm -hmm. some of them do get us at, at us, oh, the yeah, teachers, sure. yeah, they yeah. blame it on us. Well, I'm bringing them to school every day. <laughs> exactly. Good, you know? Do your job. <laughs> right. But it's like we sending them this work at home. I do try my best to take the extra time with the students who do need help. Mm -hmm. But it is sometimes hard because I have a class of 30 students. Okay. That's and a lot. it's just me. Yeah. That's you a know? lot. That's a lot. So. Have you had any of those uh, confrontations with parents yet? Not yet. Oh, thank God. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that for you, man. Me neither. <laughs> Cause your parents be, man, your parents be. They wild. <laughs> golly. Your parents be in something else for real, for real. What's something that you remember that you might have didn't get out of school that you trying to change up as far as being a teacher like? Um, I would say caring more for the students and mm -hmm. their education and wanting them to succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in school, I didn't really have teachers who really cared mm -hmm. like that. So in me, my high, the high school I started out at was Detroit School of Arts, okay. DSA. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that school, then I didn't have teachers who like actually care. I would stay in dance class all day. I didn't mm -hmm. care about English. I didn't <laughs> care about math. For sure. I was in ballet class all day, yeah. but it was affecting my, my grades. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, teachers who actually care yeah, more. No, for sure, because like a lot, of, a lot of teachers come out here, and we understand y'all should get paid more. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But there's something you're passionate about, so you should come to work yes. and just, you know, 
You got a job to do. And you, yes. you, you'll be that person that that kid will never forget about. Right. I never forget about Miss Hope. And not because of the teaching, because I like how Miss Hope look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But teaching wise, I never forget about Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams was like a good teacher. Okay. He was handicapped. He had mm -hmm. like this urn that was stuck right here. Mm -hmm. That urn was strong. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he was like, he would fly. He'd come in. He was, he'd do his job and stuff like that. He'd get on you when he needed to get on you. Okay. He was just somebody that cared. And Mr. Coker, shout out to Mr. Coker at Bustle. Okay. Like those are two guys. Who was those teachers you would never forget about? Um, you know what I'm saying? Elementary, middle, high school? Let's see. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Rowland. Okay. Those were like the best two teachers ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like they cared about us. And when it comes to learning, or if if we needed extra help, they would stay after school with us to mm -hmm. help us. So definitely those two. Okay. 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 Now, uh, yeah, I, I hope you never, you know what I'm saying, I hope the rest of this year go by good. And Me too. Is this something that you want to do for years on out? Yes, it is. Okay, that's what's up. Shout yes. out to uh, Mrs. Bridges. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, go back to this year. What's something that you learned about yourself as far as, like, you didn't know you was capable of or things that you need to still grow on? Like, talk about that. Um, So, I still need to work on my, my patience. I'm a very impatient person. Mm -hmm. Like, I like stuff to happen like yeah. that but learning that i do have to be patient mm -hmm. um and sometimes i get stuck in my ways mm -hmm. you know i be wanting things a certain way but sometimes it's okay to go outside take mm -hmm. a new route so that's what i'm i'm working on for sure now can you blame your parents on the patient part because you go back to saying <laughs> that you got everything you never had bad christmas it's because your parents was like it's whatever you wanted you I'm, had it i'm gonna blame some of that on them because i am spoiled still to this day i'm spoiled yeah i'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest and how do it you know i'm not no messy dude but how do it go over into relationships uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, See, shit. I, still, oh, shit. I still get spoiled. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but sometimes you gotta say no. Sometimes though. <laughs> you know, and I get upset when I hear that no. That's funny, man. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Shout out to relationships out here and stuff. All love is that we love love. Yes. <laughs> what? Well, well, let's stay on that real quick. How do you know this guy was the one? I, don't, I ain't gonna say you here or not, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna say because at put, first, put on the spot real quick. When he hit me up, it was a no for me. I yeah. was like. Mm -mm. Yeah, why? And he is younger than me. Okay, okay. Um, but it was our first date. He came to pick me up. Mm -hmm. Although we had a little situation, yeah. <laughs> his truck kind of started acting up on us, and oh. we was stuck on gross back. I'm yeah. like, uh, what do we do? <laughs> but after that, it was his consistency. Yeah. Like he didn't change up on For me. Sure. It For was sure. the support. Yeah. It was everything. Oh, yeah, you that, got that, me blushing. That's, 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 that's real love, dog. Here, We're like, hell yeah, I did that. <laughs> but no, when you, hey, something happened to the car. They'll tell you the girl gonna be really there for you. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> man. <laughs> No, for sure. Because then you're going to know she she a real one or not. Because I remember one time I picked up a girl. She met me at the club. This, this part a prior relationship. She met me at the club, you know what I'm saying, got her number, whatever. And when I went to go pick her up, she stayed somewhere, I think, Oak Park, somewhere. You know what I'm saying? But I came over in my Corsica. Now, okay. if y'all know what Corsica is, a 1996 Corsica is a terrible car. Okay. When it rained, the bottom of your car get wet. So I had to just go ahead and get my towels and pet the water out and shit like that. And when she seen that car, boy, I never heard from her again. <laughs> We did our little thing, whatever, and after that, so like, yeah, you know, uh, I got a situation. I'm like, oh, all right. It was the damn car. I know it was the car. <laughs> so shout out to Doug and shout out to y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's good love. You know what I'm saying? That's how I knew my wife was the one. It's because, like, shit we was going through, other women would have just been like, you know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But when you can fight it out, as long as you showing that you working hard, you ain't no lazy ass bum yes. or like that, then it, it'd be good. So try, like I said, once again, shout out to all the love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, we just talk about, like, being depressed and stuff like that. When times get hard for you, who can you talk to? Like, um, my mom. Mm -hmm. My mom, she is my, she is, she everything to me. Yeah. She my mom, not just the mom, but she my best friend. That's the one who I call real quick. Mm -hmm. For sure. No, well, real quick, dog. When you introduced your dude to the parents, mm -hmm. how was that? It was actually good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always kind of nervous, right? Yeah, you know what he, he won. He won. All right, bad, bad. Because he's very you. interactive. Bad. You know? <laughs> yeah, dog. You know. <laughs> now, uh, what's your day to day life away from all this teaching, away from the classes you teach and stuff like that? Like, what 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 brings you personal joy outside of your business and your your whole little you know what I'm saying what you do every day? Um, I would have to say, honestly, just 
chilling, eating mm-hmm. some chocolate chip cookies. Oh. <laughs> 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 that's that's a good day for me. I don't be out here in these streets. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of like a lame. If I'm mm-hmm. not in the studio or working, mm-hmm. I like to just be at home. For sure, for <laughs> sure. Give us your movie title. A movie title. Let me see. Can we come back to that? I gotta think on okay. that. One. <laughs> I, I'm not think on that one. For sure, for sure, for sure. Now going into the new year, what some goals that you setting for yourself? Um, a first goal is my business. Mm. Um, really trying to invest more in my marketing side mm. of it to get be the best you studios out there, let the world know what I offer at my studio. Mm. Um, so that's like number one for me. Mm. And then two, I do want to get back in school, mm. go for that that masters, okay. you know. Um, and let me see. Three, get rich. I'm yeah. trying to get rich. Oh no, out for here, sure. Y'all. Hell yeah, got to. That's always <laughs> money. Always a plus. Now going back to school is it is it gonna be hard for you taking that that time off in between to get things back right? Like you said, you got a lot of stuff that you do. So, so I mean, you know, they got to set up. You can do the online classes. Mm-hmm. So it should be easy, especially mm-hmm. because now that I'm in my field, mm-hmm. so it should be easy breezy. Mm-hmm. Now going to the new year, have there ever been a time that you had to like leave some friends behind? Oh yeah. How tough was it? Talk about that. Like, what was the reason you had to? You felt you had to do that? Um, whew, listen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say because you know sometimes things are just it just don't work out. You don't see eye to eye with your friends too. Mm. Um, I've had friendships where I thought we was we was like this. Yeah. But I'm big on loyalty mm-hmm. when it comes to my friendships. Me. If I know you don't mess with somebody, they done did you wrong, I'm not going to be hanging out with them. Mm-hmm. It's a wrap. Yeah. But I noticed some people, they don't have what you have. Like, they mm-hmm. don't think loyalty is a big thing, and I do. So I just have to let them go. Yeah. Have you ever been that one person that you let go? You're like, damn, I wish I had to do this, but I just had to do it. Um, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know who that person is right right away. Like, you thinking mm-hmm. about right now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's always tough though. Like, but you you realize that when you get older, like everybody can't continue on the journey. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes. Everybody ain't good for you. You know, at the same time. That is true. And it'd be tough. I like, even shit. Fuck friends, family. You gotta leave some family oh, behind. Yes, definitely. You know what family saying? too. And people, I, I seen something. I think it was today. It was like people arrive with you on the on the way up, but once they see you make it somewhere that they wanted to be, there, that's when the hate mm-hmm. start coming in. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, shout out to all them hating ass niggas, man. Yep, jealousy. <laughs> bye. Yeah. Now, what type of friend are you? Me, I'm, I feel like I'm the best friend you could ever have <laughs> because one, I'm going to be that listening ear, whatever you're going through. I give great advice mm-hmm. too. I'm going to support you in whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. I'm loyal. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make sure you good always, whether you up or down. I'm going to let you know if you're wrong or right. I don't care. I'm, I'm that friend. So you get great advice, huh? Yes. Man. <laughs> <laughs> what, what advice would you give to somebody who, you know, saying they they want to be, be in a relationship. They feel like they're getting too old. Their time is ticking. And just, you know what I'm saying? They feel like life is just wasting away. And they're trying to rush into a relationship. I feel like you're never too old. You're never too old, like, to find that one mm-hmm. or to get back out here. Mm-hmm. Like, don't never say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never, it's never too late for anything. Whether you try to get back in school or start that business, get in mm-hmm. a relationship, you're never too old for any of that. Mm-hmm. I feel like do what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Cause what, in life you want to be happy. What about advice to somebody? You you got your own studio. You starting your stuff up. They mm-hmm. want They got they got dreams and aspirations, but they ain't got the funds, and they feel like they clock is ticking as well. What would mm-hmm. your be be your advice to that person who who trying to pursue something but just don't know where to start or how to start? Um, it's all about that hustle and that grind. <laughs> yeah. And that that hard work. You mm-hmm. gotta be willing to put in the work because. I never thought that I would have my own dance studio. It was always a dream of mine, but mm-hmm. I didn't think I would have it this soon. Mm-hmm. But I was consistent. I was consistent when it came to like teaching my classes, keeping mm-hmm. my clientele in, mm-hmm. and I never stopped. And that's how I got this beautiful studio. For sure, for sure. Shout out to that. Shout out to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her, she be on point. You ain't been ever on podcast, but all, you know, she, you on point or everything besides the whole movie title. But <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm still thinking of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Worst advice and best advice you receive. It could be personal. It could be business. There's some terrible advice that you like, what the fuck? Or, you know what I'm saying, some great advice that you always, you know what I'm saying, stick with you. Um, Let me see. Because I get a lot of advice, y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I'm going to say 
accepting people for who they are. Mm-hmm. That was like some good advice. Okay. Um, because me, um, I could sometimes be naive. I just think everybody is just so nice and mm-hmm. you know good when I let them in my life. But then when things go south, it'd be like, dang, <laughs> they really wasn't that way. So yeah. accepting people for who they are, mm-hmm. you know, and it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. I definitely have to learn that. Just, <laughs> just accept that that chick ain't for you. There you go. <laughs> there learn you go. that she ain't going to change, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I had to learn that shit a couple of times. I'm good now, though. <laughs> Now, what about that bad advice that you received? Uh, bad advice. Business and personal. Business and personal. Let me see. I know you got some bad business advice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, let me think. Bad business advice? Mm. Like, I'm trying to think real hard. <laughs> Are we, get to, we get to personal then. <laughs> um... Okay, we're going to come back. <laughs> Y'all got to be thinking too right, hard my, on the spot. What about personal? What about personal advice? Personal bad advice. Um, sticking with certain people, mm-hmm. whether it's friends or yeah. like relationship, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Sticking with them when you know yeah. you shouldn't be. Like you should have sure. been let yeah. them go, left, left them alone. No, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell so, yeah. yeah. That was bad advice. First adult decision. What's the first decision you made as an adult that you like, man, this life is like life is real. I'm out here. When I got my own place. <laughs> How was that? I was like, what? Yeah. Paying bills? Yeah. Rent? Yeah. What? Light bill? What? Man. What is this? That's and then I need groceries? Yeah, exactly. That's gonna make you cr- <laughs> wanna cry. Yes. Yeah, but when, 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 did you get used to it? Take time for you to get used to that? Like that whole little adult life? Um, I did get used to it after a while. I was like, Okay, yeah, this is just part of being an adult, mm-hmm. you know? Being independent, yeah. so I mean, yeah, but I hate it. You ever had to go back home? Yes. Now I talk about that though. Yes, I've had, like, had to go back home. Yeah, a few times. <laughs> what, what was that first time like going back home? I caught you like I ain't never coming back to the crib because <laughs> I went back. I left like had to come back home. Like damn. Mm-hmm. And uh, the bad thing about my job, I came back home with my son. Like so, it was like it ain't okay. just me. <laughs> it's my kid. And my mom was like, yeah, you can come back, but your girl ain't coming. <laughs> like damn. <laughs> Where she gonna go? <laughs> I stayed at a hotel where for like a week. Then I'm like, hey, uh, this like, where you going to go to your grandma's house? <laughs> it was it was it was hard, boy. Cause my mom, she she tried, but she like, yeah, she can't come back here. And my mom is a good person. Okay. We had, mind you, we had stayed with her prior, like when she was, you know, saying having the baby and like that. Once we had the baby, my mom was like, I ain't really rocking with how she, you know, acting and shit. Okay. So then when I had to come back, she was like, yeah, you you and Shaw, y'all welcome. Not that other person though, like. <laughs> Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, that was that was demise our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how was that that first time, that very first time coming back to the crib? Like, was um, you like disappointed in yourself? I wouldn't say I was disappointed. I was just like, I was kind of hurt because I'm like, dang, I'm back at home in my old room, <laughs> like, <laughs> secluded, you know. I mean, secluded in there. Yes, house. people nosy in my house to <laughs> listen to your phone calls and stuff. It mm-hmm. was like, but always even now like my parents they're like listen no matter you could all our doors are always open for sure so. for sure that's always a plus too yes because you got some parents and them doors ain't open right <laughs> they're like uh-uh yeah. figure it out that's why I always hate when people say like once you turn 18 you gotta get out like mm-hmm. that's yeah, that's, it's not real at the end of the day. Like, I ain't gonna never do it to my kids. Now, if you come mm-hmm. back home and you on bullshit and you just sitting around, that's different. Oh, you gotta get a body. Yes. Here. But if you working and trying to, you got a goal towards something, then cool. You can come back to the crib. I know it's hard times right. out here. Yeah, but yeah, that's the only way. When you ain't got that, 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 that welcome back home spot, like, that, that's, that's tough. Like, damn, I'll be in the car. Right. <laughs> then you can't burn gas because that shit costs too much. Man. Like, <laughs> now you go. <laughs> Shout out to the car, the car sleepers. Salute to y'all. Uh, last time you cried, when and what was it for? But can't be death related. Okay. Um. All right. The last time I cried, it was it was about my business. Okay. Because I was really just going through it. Like, okay, what can I do? Like to get more people in the doors. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have a business, it's all it's about that profit. You gotta yeah. be making that profit. If you going into your personal funds. You gotta mm-hmm. figure some stuff out. For sure. So I def I definitely cried, mm-hmm. and I had that moment. I was like, "Babe, I might have to just shut it down. Yeah. I don't want to, but you know." Yeah. And then everybody always say, 
because I'm in the beginning stages. Mm -hmm. You know, they say give it like five years. Yeah. But I, I feel like for me, I don't have, I don't want to give it five years. <laughs> I need right people now. to get in here, for you sure. know. So, yeah, that was why I cried. But yeah. put yeah. my big girl panties on yeah, and I'm yeah. good now. Thud it out, thud it out. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got to ask, man. Mm -hmm. he, he here. When, have you ever seen your dude cry? <laughs> no. Oh, so you never cried? No. Bro, I mean, I cried for my wife. Nigga, I ran out like the Murray show. Nigga, like, <laughs> I didn't want her to see me cry at all, nigga. No, no, I hold a lot of shit in. No. Oh, for real. Sometimes that junk. Sometimes I cry be healthy. Like, I thought that was some bullshit, but sometimes you feel better about yourself. Like, like damn, it's okay to do that no, shit. There's been times. There's been times I'm thinking, like, dang, life is really life. Right Listen. Now. No, for real. That's when my wife caught me. I was in bed, like, like damn, like it was, it was, it was a man. What the year was twenty nineteen? Mm -hmm. I remember that Christmas was man, that was terrible, boy. Like then I, I'm, I'm like, you crying? Hell no! I ran about. <laughs> like, you ain't about to catch me. I'm out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking crazy out here, man. But <laughs> hey, it's all good though. Like it was no, no, no soft cry. Like I'm crying because mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Like it's some soft stuff. It was, a, it was some real life stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to the criers and shit, man. We, <laughs> we, we love you. <laughs> um, what's something that you wanted to be that you never told nobody? something that i want to be mm -hmm. um like back in you know when you young you want to be all these things and stuff like that like like some silly shit like for me i wanted to learn how to tap dance really yeah i always wanted to learn how to tap dance i could teach you oh shit, i'm too old now <laughs> <laughs> i can teach you i want to learn how to tap dance and um, uh and play a piano those two things that i want to do that i never you know saying you know Went definitely up. me like pl playing an instrument mm -hmm. for sure definitely the piano like i could play like a little bit but i wanted to be like cold with it yeah. and because i could sing too for sure. like alicia keys i just yeah. think she dope yeah, yeah, you know yeah. i was about to say you seen like alicia keys oh we got here this. oh no 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 i heard no but think about it i heard you know where i did my you had posted something in your story saying mm -hmm. that should you get back to the music yeah so i had went back and looked at the old videos I'm like that she got a voice she can sing a little some some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when did that? Uh, when did you discover that? Like the whole. Little... Um. So, I guess you could say I'm a woman who got. I was blessed with many gifts mm -hmm. from the higher power. Like growing up, I was always, you know, in the choir mm -hmm. or dancing. Um. But the singing, I tried to take it serious before. Like I used to be in a girl group. Mm -hmm. Then I was an independent artist, but things just never worked out. What was the girl group name? Uh, Lois Lane. Lois Lane. Okay, talk about that. Yes. Right, where y'all get that name? Lois right? Lane. Yeah. Uh, this was at Star Factory. It was mm -hmm. like a artist development I heard that. studio. Yeah, I heard yes. some people down here was in there. Yes. So we had to go through this boot camp, and that boot camp was no joke. We was pushing cars. Yeah. Y'all had yeah. us pushing cars. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it helped us learn a lot. We got to meet a lot of celebrity artists, sing for them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you're dealing with all females, different personalities, mm -hmm. you know, things didn't work out. I got out. They kept going. Yeah. Then eventually that didn't I about work say, did out. I was about to say, did they work out without you? No. Uh, okay. They tried, but it didn't. Were you happy, though? Like, didn't um, work out? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was happy that I got out. Yeah, you know, cause I was like, who I ain't gotta worry about that no more. For sure. Um, but when that didn't work out for me, I just always felt like my first love, which is dancing, mm -hmm. and that's what I took more serious, mm -hmm. working with different artists. Um, but I never just went back to. I would get in the studio, yeah. maybe do like a feature or something for artists, but mm -hmm. I never took it serious again. Yeah. So you got the itch now, like to. Um, I've been talking to a producer who mm. reached out to me and oh. he trying to get me back in the studio. Yeah. So what's it gonna take for that? I don't know. I just I gotta find my my love for yeah. it again. For sure. That's all. Hell yeah, hell yeah. We did, <laughs> once you drop the EP, come on back. We can talk about some more stuff. <laughs> I got you. I got you. That's what I always wanted to be able to sing. Like mm -hmm. I remember I was jealous one time because my cousin was singing to some chicks. And they was they was just falling for him. I'm like, damn, I wish I could do that. So I was like trying to practice and <laughs> Like, dog, I'll be singing some Luther, dog, dog. like, damn, I can't do it. Like, that shit, that's a gift that I wish I had, because I listen to more mm -hmm. R&B now than rap. Okay. Because a lot of rap music be like, all right, nigga, you got the same, you it know what I'm saying? It be the same, yes. Yeah, but, like, R&B, like, you can never go wrong with some good R&B. Mm -hmm. I just wish I could sing. God didn't bless me with that ability. Like, I wish he did, because that nigga was singing his ass all the time. <laughs> got all the chicks around him, like, damn. <laughs> we, like, 13, like, this nigga cheating, like... <laughs> I'm over here like, yeah, what's your name? What's your number? This nigga's just singing this. She's like, yeah, what's your name? I'm like, damn. <laughs> R. Kelly in this way, they were going crazy. <laughs> Shout out to the singers and shit, man. So you said that's something that you, you just got to find a love to get back to it, huh? Yes. And well, you know, so I hopefully do. Like, it's always good to have multiple hats, and you got a lot of them. I 
I do. A lot of them. Now, stay on the music. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's going to be a question that we got to go back and, you know, say revisit later on. But okay. Give me an album or a song that will tell me about you without you having to open your mouth. Ooh. It could a, be, it could be, it could be a different part of your life. It could be younger years. Now, it could be something you was going through that's going to tell me about you. Like, just something in your, in your saying life that this song will explain. Okay. Um, or album. Or album. Or album. Mm-hmm. Huh, let me see. I could use some artists. I'd be like, I'd be feeling them. Seven Streeter, her. Mm-hmm. Um, them like my my top two female, Eric Bellinger. Mm-hmm. His whole album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's about you a little bit? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. In what way? Um... In a good way, in a mm. bad way, yeah. <laughs> all you know, around. You know, because a lot of women be loving that, you know, they be having that Mary on when they're going through oh, stuff. Yeah. And, yes. But they always say Mary J. Blige made the best music when she heartbroken. Oh, and when yeah. when she in love, that music be made. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, hey, get your heart broke again, Mary. <laughs> you ain't doing it right. Like, <laughs> but for sure, man. Can you make, but as an R&B artist, can you make good music when you happy? I feel like you can. Yeah, because even if you got the right team too, mm-hmm. like I feel like you can. Because even think about rappers, when you going through something, that's when your best music come mm-hmm. out. Like rappers, like you going through life, like that's why your first album is always right the great way. album because you know what I'm saying you going through that struggle, and that grind, being an artist. So right. all your shit that's written prior to that, you ain't got no money like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, it, and that's why the second album, like, damn, what you gonna talk about now? Mm-hmm. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You got everything that you talked about in that first album that you wanted. Mm-hmm. So I always feel like that struggle music, if it comes to singing or rapping, is always the best. Yeah, I yeah. agree. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, shout out to Dope Boy Cash, y'all niggas, and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> they can rap about that shit that we all, you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> now, give me an album or an artist that changed your life as far as I like, made you love music. Because, you know what I'm saying? Of course, you love artists for... You know, saying hey, my mom listened to this or my dad listened to this, mm-hmm. but once you got your own ear for music, who was those people for you? Um, I would have to say it would be like in our generation now. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go back, Eric Bellinger. Like I just feel like he's dope. Mm-hmm. Trevor Jackson, dope. Mm-hmm. Her is dope. Mm-hmm. Like I can listen to the entire album, yeah, not yeah. stop it. Now, uh, you mind me asking how old are you? I am 34. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. No, I thought you were about, <laughs> about 22 or so, 23 in this world. Dang. Yeah. All right. All right. So, yeah. So, who will be, you uh, a little bit behind me. I'm old as hell. But uh, <laughs> who do you feel like our GOAT is as far as, like, back in the day, like, mm-hmm. my mom and them had, like, like Luther, you know okay. what I'm saying, different people like that. It, it would have been R. Kelly for us until he did been. what he did. Right. So, who's going to, who, when we go and we be, like, grandparents and stuff like that, we tell our grandkids on, you know what I'm saying, who they should to, who's going to be that GOAT for us, you feel? Rapper or singer? Both. Both. Okay. I don't um, know if you was into the rap, but if you is, then let me know. Here and there, you know. Yeah. Detroit music will all be the same to me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, let me see. Singer, I would have to say, like. It's still it's still hard to R. Kelly out there. <laughs> but it's just <laughs> once you start literally listening, R. Kelly is like, damn. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. There's so many. Yeah. Who would you tell your grandkids like, "Hey, you gotta listen to this, this"? I mean, but that's like back in Whitney. Their day. Yeah, kinda. cause like yeah, kind of before us. Like I'm yeah. thinking like for my. Like, like, <laughs> 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 I got you. Got kind of like. Let me see. I graduated old folks, so it gotta be like in that late '90s, early 2000s. Right. Like, cause why like, you, you? I mean, you, right now you gotta probably say Usher. Definitely Usher, yeah. for sure. Yes. Um, with Usher, you got, I mean, Chris Brown. Yeah, yeah Chris Brown. Hell yeah. <laughs> who, who win that versus battle between them two? I was arguing my cousin because she, she was sounding a little crazy. No, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Chris, <laughs> Chris, no, think about it. Chris Brown got. Chris, Usher is, he. he yeah, because Chris Brown go got, Usher. Chris Brown got songs, but the thing that I heard somebody say, he don't have like a, um, a Confessions album. Like that album is oh. like, you, like that album. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and so like, like that. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I'm gonna uh, go with Usher though if it was yeah. a battle. Yeah, yeah, Usher, Usher, <laughs> hell, Usher, Usher is, is, is our goat, man. It will yeah. be R. Kelly, but Sorry. what about what about rapping for us? Rapping. Um, let me see. It could be any artist. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I'm sorry. Cash doll. Yeah. Oh, that's you go. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that way. <laughs> cash doll. That that that's yes. Yeah, shout out to Cash Doll. She, she be spitting. Hell yeah. Hey, come on show, Cash Doll. Yeah. Right. Come, come on. <laughs> we need you. We need you. Come <laughs> come to our, our little people out here. Just. Hell yeah. I think if uh I might to go with what's the name? I might to go with J. Cole. Oh oh J. Cole. yeah. J. Cole definitely for sure. Yeah, I might to go with J. Cole and stuff, man. Shout out to J. Cole and shit. Man. Now uh growing up, you already kinda of touched on it, you know what I'm saying? Two parent household. They still together right now? Um, so no, actually my parents are have broken up. Okay. Back in the day when I was a baby baby. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, so it's my mom and my stepdad, but he's okay. my dad. Okay, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Do you still got a good relationship with your pops? Your, like... My sperm donor no. Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. How how did did that fetch you at, at any you know what I'm saying? Cause you do got a stepfather. How long have your stepfather been in your life? Um, since I was whew. no, that's dad then. <laughs> yeah, that's dad. Since I was uh like thirteen, fourteen. Okay, twelve, oh, yeah. maybe twelve. Oh, so you been around? Or did yes. it take you a while, a while to get used to you know say hey this stepdad because you know what I'm saying he here and um it did not okay because the him stepping in like as my dad mm -hmm. it. It, it made me feel amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, he would help me wash my hair. I remember them days. Mm -hmm. You know, he taught me so much when it came to my education. Mm -hmm. um, but, no, it didn't take me. Yeah, shout out um, to the stepdad, man, stepdad. Yes. Now, with, with your real dad, like, him not being around, did you ever have, like, any hate or re resentment or whatever? Oh, yes, like, I still do till this day. Yeah. Do, you, do you know who he is? Oh, yes. Oh, so, mm -hmm. what that's that y'all spoke? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> So we don't we don't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I, I visit that side of my family, mm -hmm. um, especially because of my grandma mm -hmm. on that side, and I do have brothers on mm -hmm. that side that I'm very close, close with. Okay, that's what's up. So I still go over there, but when it comes to me and that person, yeah. I don't have a relationship. I mm -hmm. thought about reaching out to him too, like to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I just need some time. No, for sure, for but sure. But yeah, I definitely. Sure. But just make sure, like, if it's something that you want to get out, you know, what I'm saying like my my uncle be saying, she mm -hmm. like, hey, if you got a conversation, it's better late than never. Just to, it ain't gotta be a conversation that's gonna lead to y'all having the best relationship. It mm -hmm. just be some shit that you might want to get off your chest. And that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like y'all ain't gonna be friends at the worst. But like, hey, right. you need to know this. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So hey, that's what it is. Shit, I'm a I'm a therapist too sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> now you do you think like if your stepdad wasn't in the picture? Like things to like that. Yo, yo, look on men to be a little different. Um, yes. Mm. Um, because the way my okay, I'm not gonna call him stepdad. I'm gonna call him dad. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's the way dad my dad then. came yeah. in, like he and how he treated my mom, like mm. he showed me how what I want in a man. For sure. You know. Mm. Um, but if he wasn't, I don't know. Yeah. I, Probably be selling. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm thankful. Hold on, hold on, I'm make glad. sure you make sure you say you 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 say what you sell like because people he don't want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you selling. Oh, oh, okay, okay. selling. Me too. Not okay. selling. Oh, let's correct this real quick. Yeah. Scratch that. Okay. Rewind. I'm like, settling. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You sell my drugs? <laughs> don't go around like, hold on. What you gonna be? What? <laughs> That's the, that's the, the headline right there. <laughs> hey, they're going to get a cry of a whole conversation. So what you have been selling if your dad, if your dad was there? <laughs> that was funny as hell, dog. Damn. Settling. I want to make sure that people see it because I don't want nobody assuming nothing about you. Right. So I'm like, hold on, selling, uh, what? <laughs> dog, that's shit funny. Dog, I'm like, hold on, hold on. Look, uh, he, his head, he wanted to say something like, nigga, selling what, nigga? <laughs> they both look too, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I corrected that. <laughs> Hey, we, we hey, people, hey, shout out to the sellers. We, I just want to make sure, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh shit! Now, uh, <laughs> the whole growing up thing is so like, you know, say you, your siblings, and stuff like that. Like, you, you thought you had a dope childhood, huh? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell I yeah! Did. Now, as far as school, you said you went to uh, DSA. High school, yes, I went to DSA. Okay, and you, and you, you already knew like the whole you wanted to be in entertainment some type of way with dance and stuff like yes, that. Yes, definitely uh, with dancing. At the high school, what was like, you know, what was life like? What were you thinking? You went straight to school. Did you go to school for yourself or for your parents? Like, talk about that. Um. So, I when I I did from high school, I did go straight to 
uh, college. I mm. went. I started out at Wayne State. Mm. Now I didn't graduate from DSA. Mm. I actually moved. Mm. My parents moved us out in the suburbs because it was okay, Candace. If you don't bring home this GPA, we leave it. Okay. And this was like the end of my eleventh grade year mm. at DSA. And I already told y'all my grades was slipping. Mm. Didn't bring home that GPA. Mm. We literally moved the next day. We ended up going out to Shelby Township. Okay. Like 25 miles. <laughs> hey, out there. Yeah. So I graduated from Eisenhower. From there, I went straight to Wayne State. Mm. Now, I can't say I should have waited, mm. you know. Yeah, a little bit of time. Yes. Yeah. Because I wasn't taking college serious. Mm -hmm. I was there at the parties. Having fun. Yeah. Having turn up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, was Eisenhower, was that, was that white school, black school mix? Um... It was mainly white, but it was some black people there. Okay, was it like a little different? Because I'm quite sure when you went to West Nine DSA, it was like all oh, black. Oh yeah, it was totally different. How like the you... first day I had the tour, yeah. <laughs> and the bell run, it was like. How you get adjusted to that? Like just being around, <laughs> like you know, a lot of white folks. Um, I feel like I adjusted well. Everybody was cool, mm -hmm. you know. Of course, you did have it's still racism, like still to this day. For sure. But it was actually cool. Yeah, did you I ever... started a step team there, yeah. so it was. Was well, dope. you ever face with any racism? Like, I remember one time this white dude had said, like, he said on his breath and John. Then we got into mm -hmm. it. He's like, only thing you niggas want to do is play basketball or football. I'm like, damn. What? I can't believe this nigga really said that. <laughs> we went to the locker room, had to you know rumble a little bit, but it was all good. <laughs> no, I never had like any issues or anything altercations mm -hmm. with anyone. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, shout out to that then. Yeah. Now take me back. Okay. To uh. March 5th, 2022. What did they mean to you with the whole grand opening of the business? That was an amazing day. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the day I opened up my doors to the public mm -hmm. um, at my dance studio. Um, a lot of hard work, I can say. Like, I invested so much in my building. Mm -hmm. um, but that was an amazing day. And I had got my new whip, too. So <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. Hell yeah, you, you yeah, double, double happy at that boy. <laughs> Hell yeah. But yeah, that was that was a great day for me. Very happy day. Now, do you have a team around you, like, as far as, like, or is, that's doing stuff that's helping you out, or is, is this all you? Um, So I have a very, very small, tiny team, mm -hmm. which is this person over here. Okay. Uh, And my family, like, my mom, my dad, mm -hmm. they help me out a lot. So. Yeah. And I do, oh, wait, wait. Cause I don't want nobody. I don't want to get yeah, cussed like, out. Oh, damn, you did me dirty. Uh, right. Campus. I do got an amazing receptionist, okay. Keisha. Shout I got. To Keisha. She 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 is my assistant. We yeah. call her Kiwi. Okay. And then I do have one of my instructors, Autumn. So shout out to them. Autumn and Keisha. <laughs> hey, you always got Keisha as a, a, a receptionist and Oh, Keisha, be looking good too, you probably. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, how long did it take for you, like, to really like, you know, the, the, it's still new. Mm -hmm. This is last year we talking about. How long did it take for you to really like get clients clients to come in and you start really making money and start eating off of this? Um, so it's still a working process, mm -hmm. honestly, now, but it did take me a minute, and especially because of the location, you know, I'm out of the city. Mm -hmm. Usually when I was doing my classes, I was at BAM Studio, which is like on eight mile in Living Noise. Yeah. So it was good for East and West to come take a for class. Sure, yep. But now that I'm on fourteen mile I do get some they're like, oh, you're just so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I have clientele that stay out that way, and they love it. Mm -hmm. So they, they coming in. They yeah. coming in. What do you do like to really like promote and push the business so you can you know, saying, get those consistent customers to come and spend money with you? Um, so definitely, like, they first, they first time at the studio. As soon mm -hmm. as they walk into that door, I try to welcome them, mm -hmm. give them that wow factor, make them want to come back and be consistent with me. Mm -hmm. um, and then social media, For sure. of course, you yeah. need that. Mm -hmm. And getting them emails, mm -hmm. inboxing these people. Yeah, yeah, got so. to, got to. <laughs> like that's that's and that's how I do with the podcast. I'm constantly sending like my um my uh my playlist or whatever to people mm -hmm. and, and hoping that people reach out. Yes. Now, I tell you, if you send it to 20, two people will reach back out. There you, you go. You was one of the yeah. 20. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know what I'm saying? And you just build off of that. You know what I'm saying? It's just consistently posting, consistently mm -hmm. putting it out there so people can be like, all right, either I'm going to get tired of you or I'm going to see what it's about. Right. You know what I'm saying? One of the two. What's the uh, what's the goal with the business, short and long term? Goal? Make sure I put that term in. You have to go. Okay. I don't um, think short and long. That's not so... a little pause. <laughs> short. <laughs> Short term girl, go, short term goal. Mm -hmm. Let me say my words because sure. I ain't selling. All right. <laughs> exactly. Um, right now it's just to really 
like I said, get the name out there more. Mm -hmm. Get it more noticeable for everyone because I want to be that dance studio. It was like, you need to go here. And because I offer so much mm -hmm. at my studio, like I don't just teach adult classes. I teach kids classes. Mm -hmm. um, and then the styles of dance that I teach there. I don't just do pole fitness. I got heels and chair. Mm -hmm. I do couples parties too, you for sure. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Long-term goal would definitely be I do want a bigger studio, mm -hmm. you know, so I could offer more classes at multiple times. For sure. You know? yeah. yeah, I was about to say it because you got, you know, you got uh, the, the fitness class pole dance. Right. Uh, you got the couples. You got beginners. Yeah. You got hip-hop. You got the youth. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, like, with that, do you want to eventually have something that you do, like, start a program, like a summer program or... Yes. Like, even right now, I do have um, my youth dance semester, mm -hmm. and basically I have the kids for six months, mm -hmm. and then at the end, we do a big showcase at the end. Mm -hmm. So, it's real dope. Now, do you feel like, th like these classes, like, do they work for the ladies, like, as far as building, like, confidence? And, like, talk about how they are day one to, like, once they are, once they in there, and just, like, how, how, how what, what's the difference you see within the ladies? Oh, yes. I have women who come to my class where they they be very shy mm -hmm. or they be timid. It's like, oh, Candace, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. But I make them feel comfortable. And through my teaching, I make sure, like, I motivate them and empower them um, because I cater to the everyday woman, mm -hmm. moms, people who are trying to be entrepreneurs in mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like when they leave, yeah, it's just amazing to see, like, what? Yeah, Who yeah. are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like I never, I never did nothing like this, bro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, 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 talk, talk to the dudes out there. Mm -hmm. The dudes out there, when your, your your lady, your wife, your girl, whatever, say, I want to do the pole class, uh, pole dance class. Mm -hmm. First thing a dude, most dudes gonna think about strippers, yes. naked. Like, what you yeah. trying to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. talk to the guys and and um, as far as like when they woman coming to them, like, what where are they coming to when they come to you? Um, so over here we do it classy, mm -hmm. not ratchet, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, pole fitness and pole dancing at my studio is empowering, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful art. That's yeah. how I let the ladies know that. It's beautiful, the different shapes that you can do, mm -hmm. whether you are a beginner or intermediate. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a great workout. For like, sure. pole, you gotta have that upper body strength, and mm -hmm. that's what I help the ladies with getting that upper body strength, that core strength, and just showing them the different shapes that they could do is yeah. is dope. Yeah, you ever had a girl come to you like, girl, you help me out? Yes, I put it on Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I, I showed that one move, it was a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> not in my classes they be saying stuff like that like oh i can't wait to get home mm -hmm. you know <laughs> you have asked my come thank you like girl you you changed our you know changed our bedroom a little bit <laughs> i've actually had one client her and her boyfriend came to my couples class me and my sis we did a i think it was valentine's day class mm -hmm. and she they made a baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah and yeah. she she never, she reminds me all the time. Every time she come to my class, see, Candace, this is why I can't be messing with you. <laughs> she coming right back, though. <laughs> Get some more moves and just Talk about that, the couple classes with the, with the dudes. Like, mm -hmm. are they there just to, you know, enjoy the show from a lady? Like, like talk um, about that. Is the guys, like, a little weird? Like, what the hell am I coming to? Like, No, so they are there. They just really just there to enjoy the show. They sit mm. in a chair, and mm. we show the ladies a nice routine. Sometimes we do have the guys, like, interact with them, yeah. you know, but they enjoy it, too. Now, I got to ask. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> do you be having guys that come to you, like, I want to do these pole classes? Yes, I got to ask for the, you know, say for the others, you know what I'm saying? I do. <laughs> I'll say others, like, they, I do. they're not human. Like, <laughs> Sorry, scratch that. You know, for the you know, I don't discriminate for the you know the gay guys. Me neither. Like, I, I do. Yeah, I have had them come take classes or interested in taking classes. Now, are they messed up with the women? Are the women looking like you know what I'm saying? How is that? No. Okay. They be regular. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, what you cool <laughs> they with? Or fit you right. Like, no, I'm I'm cool with it. They fit sure. right in though. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> like, girl, I want me some classes. <laughs> Show me some Candace. <laughs> Oh shit! Shout out to everybody. We love everybody, though. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> now with those classes, you know what I'm saying. Of course, that's the way it spice up the relationship. Some different. Mm -hmm. Ain't the whole let's go out to eat and shit like right. that. What are some other things you feel like can be used to spice up the relationship when things are kind of like done, done. Um, I would say 
maybe stepping outside your comfort zone, trying mm-hmm. something new, something you both never done before. Mm-hmm. Like for me, like I said, sometimes I'm stuck in my ways. I don't like to venture out and try new things. Mm-hmm. But the person I'm with now, he mm-hmm. be taking me outside my comfort zone. And I actually do like it or I enjoy myself mm-hmm. at the end of the day. So, yeah, try yeah. new stuff. It's yeah. okay. Now, outside of the obvious, you know what I'm saying, sex and stuff, what do you do, like, to make sure a relationship ain't dying down? Like, are you making sure of constant communication, uh, doing things that, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we both, men and women, we sleep on, like, all right, we got her, we got him, mm-hmm. and then, shit, we, we just be like, whatever. So that's where that consistency comes in. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you got to... You got to make it feel new again. No, for sure. You know, whether it is going out, Mm -hmm. do something new, try something new, some new food, or Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, (laughs) spice it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, (laughs) this dude right here is is my uncle slash producer Mm -hmm. and shit. He he told me some game, like, back in the day, like, when 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 your lady doing something or change something up, let them know before somebody else can let them know. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't, they'll be like, damn, like... This nigga Bernard and knows my feet. So right. like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I remember I had a nigga walk up to my wife and say something about her feet, dog. I wasn't there. I can't, I, can't, I was getting some DiGiorno's and shit. Like, and she looking like, what's wrong with you? Like, that nigga says about my feet. I'm like, I'm looking like, cuz. I want him to look at me real quick. Like, nigga, if you don't get my, my wife feet out of her mouth, not your mouth, nigga. <laughs> No, that joke's crazy. He was an old dude, though, dog. <laughs> I'm like, damn, that was random as hell. They came here. Comp- I mean, she do keep her feet, dude, you mm. know what I'm saying? A1 and shit. <laughs> Shout out to the feet lovers and shit, man. <laughs> now, what what do you enjoy the most when you go to, go to work as far as, like, with the with the whole studio and stuff like that, the class? Um, so, I just enjoy meeting like especially like my new clients that i'm now getting in Mm -hmm. i enjoy meeting them and Mm -hmm. they're they just get attached to me so quickly like the conversations that we have Mm -hmm. you know and i just i love it like Mm -hmm. meeting new people even my regular clients that have been with me for like years you know seeing their growth Mm -hmm. in the studio and just outside the studio with their (laughs) life and everything (laughs) yeah Yeah, now um i'm blinded (laughs) <laughs> oh shoot dog. now uh, talk about pricing mm-hmm. you already know black people man we don't, we don't like spending money <laughs> <laughs> talk about pricing and, and, and stuff like that it's right like the studio my pricing? studio and stuff that you offer and stuff like okay. how do you go about pricing and do you have like first time deals or you know what i'm saying i know yes. you had some shit on black friday yes so i do have a new client special where you could take any three classes for sixty dollars okay and that's a great deal mm-hmm. um <laughs> <laughs> but other than that my classes range from 20 to 25 dollars per and day then, um per, yes. per session yes okay per class and they're all a hour long mm-hmm. Um, and then like, if I do a pop-up class, like next Saturday, I got my twerk it out class is only $10. Mm-hmm. You can't beat that, mm-hmm. you for know, sure. for a full hour. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's the ranges of my classes. And then I do have like different packages that you can choose from if you want to really be more like consistent sure. instead of paying like yeah. every time you come. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so you got some stuff like a bundle, like a month. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. Now, if I wanted to, you know what I'm saying? Cause this sounds like maybe a good idea for like a birthday gift. If I wanted to get something for my wife and her and her friends, mm-hmm. our, you know what I'm saying? A couple people and stuff like that. What would you, what you going to tax me? Do I um, get this podcast love or it's like, no, <laughs> like, but no, how much? <laughs> that's just like black niggas. Like. So I would have to ask, would you be, would you want to give her a dance party or a pole party? Uh, what's the difference? Talk, talk to me. So the pole party is, of course, with the poles. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then the dance party, you could choose between twerk, mm-hmm. heels, or chair lap dance. Okay. I'll probably do a pole jump. Pole. Yeah. So the pole party started at 250 mm-hmm. and it's for two hours for yeah. up to 15 ladies. Okay, okay. And you could bring food, drinks, yeah. you could decorate think, yeah, that'd be some, if that'd you be like. Good, some good shit to so. do. I think I'm a, we friends now. So I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> might do that. It's something different. I ain't, ain't got to be around. <laughs> then I'll be in the crib with this, you know what I'm saying? Waiting and jump some silk drawers and stuff. <laughs> Like, yeah, what can this teach you? <laughs> what can this teach you for the two hours? You bet me. <laughs> Dude, hey, that's, that's, that's a good promo. Yeah, I ain't going to put this part on there. Yeah, that'd be a good, uh, that'd be some good stuff. Like, she got some homies and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, I got to say something about the, uh, you know what I'm saying? Big ladies. Mm-hmm. You, got, you got big ladies, you got small. You know what I'm saying? Do they be coming in there feeling like a little insecure? Like, hey, all these girls around me little. 
And I mean, you know what I'm saying? Talk, and, and what do you do to kind of bring them like, hey, fuck that, like, you, um, you, you. So, surprisingly, the BBW women who come to my class, they mm. already have the confidence. For sure, for sure. That's what's so up. So, yeah. they be in that thing. They don't care. Like, oh, Candice, yeah. let me show you. Yeah, I'll be yeah, like, yeah. okay. Yeah. Show me. <laughs> show me. Okay? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, the confidence already be there for them. And mm-hmm. if it's not there, that's where I step in. Yeah. And I, I boost them up. Yeah. Was it that one person you really had to like, hey, like get that shot in the of them? It was like kind of like damn near impossible, but. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And that's like um, my assistant, Kiwi. She's, mm. you know, she's a BBW. Mm-hmm. When she first came to my class, she was so shy. Mm-hmm. The confidence was low. Yeah. But now you can't tell her nothing. I'd be like, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Hell <laughs> sit yeah. Down. Now, you know, we got rhythm. You know, so I don't. But black people got rhythm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> when you get that you know saying we love everybody all races when you get that white girl in there she ain't got the little you know the rhythm she looking a little silly what do you do it kind of like help her right? i just work with them okay, okay. honestly I, I just go with the flow <laughs> you know because <laughs> you know they be in that twerking like hold on girl you yep. move all back and we're like, ah, but we do ah. come together as a class we be like go girl you go girl yeah. and in our heads we be like you so off but we got you girl we here <laughs> yeah now do you do, th- do things like as far as like hey candace i want like women like hey come to us oh yes talk about those prices i know it's a little different Yes. My producer know about that. That pull up is a little different. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so say like I do a few shows um, for a production company. It's called Sadella's Production Events, mm-hmm. and um, like if they want me to come perform, um, it is a booking fee. Okay. And the idea is the difference if you want me to just come and dance, yeah. or if you want me to bring my pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For know? sure. For sure. Um, but if you want me and a group of girls, it ranges from like 75 per dancer. Mm. Um, but if you want just Candace the Candace, yeah. <laughs> it ranges from between 250 to 400. Okay, okay. Depending on what Depends you on want. how long and where you, mm-hmm. yeah, where you, where you coming to and stuff yes. like that. Do you look at the location like, I know you probably oh, yes. looked at this location like, uh, yes. come on, uh, cause <laughs> like, come on boyfriend, come, come with me dog. <laughs> We in the hood, but we safe over here. Everything, okay. everybody's safe. <laughs> but I always, you know, saying, hey, as a, as a woman, you should bring somebody just in case. You never know. Right. We can be weirdos. We just going back and forth in DMs, so you never know. <laughs> so it's yeah, because I, I tell, hey, you ain't going. I'm I'm coming right with you. Right. <laughs> I don't know what's over there. I'm just I ain't. I'm gonna keep it real with you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now, with short with such a short time of having a business, mm-hmm. was there a time that you was in the in the bed just like, man, I don't know if I can do. I'm I'm done. Yeah, that that moment that I cried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that moment that I cried, I was like, "Yep, I'm just about to shut it down." Mm-hmm. But then again, it's just always something like turns me around. Either it's a client mm-hmm. texting me, like how I really helped change their lives, mm-hmm. or it's just something happening. I'm like, you know what? I can't stop. Yeah, for so. sure. Now, talk about the prices with the kids. Like, how is that mm-hmm. different? And like, what are you? I know, I know you're teaching them different from the adults. Yes. So where are you, like, what, how are their classes look? So for the kids, like, if you just want to drop your kid off, it's $20 drop-in fee, and mm. that's $20 per class. Mm. Um, but as far as the semester, the semester is a $200 tuition fee a month, mm-hmm. and that's for six months, and then, of course, with the showcase at the end. For sure. So for six months, I'm training your kid yeah. in ballet, modern, and hip-hop. Mm-hmm. And what I've got from, like, previous clients, they be like, Candace, your prices is cheap. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, you know, because I know these dance studios can be expensive. For sure, for sure. So. You gonna, you think about upping that prices? You know what I'm saying? 2024, new prices. <laughs> people be telling me to, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because you can do yeah. your new people. Your old people get the same price. Yeah. New people get a little, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like the barbershop when you get a haircut. <laughs> your old customers from back in the day get the same prices. Mm-hmm. These new dudes. Oh, yeah. Tax. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I'm glad I ain't got no hair no more, dog. <laughs> that shit cost too much because my kids already got to pay for them. Like, yeah, that's a whole little different. Now, do you have artists like, you know what I'm saying, as far as like you doing the whole video for them and stuff like that, being a choreographer, like, do you do that? Um, Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, So I have worked with, I haven't did it lately, but a few artists, Jeff Dean, mm-hmm. uh, Jill Opal, mm-hmm. uh, Willie P., um, those are just like the most recent artists that I have worked with mm. doing choreography or music videos with them. For sure. For sure. You ever figure out the title of that movie of your life? <laughs> Hell no. The, no. Well, I'm, I'm going to DM you. I'm going <laughs> to I hit you like, yeah, she said this, y'all. 
Fuck it, dog, man. What's some? <laughs> now nah, this type, this is young nigga shit versus some shit I've been through. Okay. What's something as a young eighteen year old Candace believed in that she look at now? Like, what the hell was I thinking? Okay, say that again. Some some thing something that you believed in as a young eighteen year old mm-hmm. that you look on now like I was crazy for even thinking that way. Um, I would have to say something that I believe in. Yeah, you, when you go to other podcasts, you are gonna think about this one. Like, Damn, his shit was better. <laughs> <laughs> um, because like back in the day, I was like, yeah, shit, Mary, hell no, really, I'll never do that. Or like to be explicit, you know what I'm saying? The old the old Jesus tell you, hey man, when you get older, you're gonna eat box. Hey nigga, hell no. <laughs> Not, but now nigga, I got a whole different <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a changed man, nigga. Like <laughs> Like eighteen year old me, like, you, you crazy cuz you get older, nigga like, test um, t- taste test, you're like, Oh shit, you know Jesus. ain't that bad. Fuck it. I, I see what the nigga uncle 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 Tony was talking about. Hard. I'm thinking too hard. Something simple. I know you was thinking crazy at 18, probably. Yeah. You probably hold a different mindset. Like, Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Let, me, let me put something out there. How would you feel, in the, how would you feel about um, goddamn <laughs> just kids? Like, shit, did you want to be teaching somebody back then? No. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a good one right there, yeah. No, I did not think that I would be teaching. And it's crazy because my mom always said, Candace, your calling is teaching. Mm-hmm. Like, that's... That that's it for sure for sure. And I would never. I thought I was actually gonna continue on to be a nurse. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. It's something about teaching. Though. Yeah, yeah. That's how my mom was like. You need to be a coach, a basketball coach. And mm-hmm. I took it as like, well, I'm not good enough to hoop. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> so, but then now I've been coaching for six, seven years now, and that's that's like the best thing ever. Oh wow! Like teaching the kids, like teaching the kids something like as far as something simple, like that they couldn't do but they can do mm-hmm. now. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. We good to go. Yes. Now, as far as being a teacher, do you look at, like, you and some teachers get together and, like, maybe start, like, a program? Like, because a lot of times we don't have those things that back in the day, after school programs, mm-hmm. things to do. We get out of school. If you're not in sports, you go home. So, have you ever thought about, like, maybe starting something like that with you and some other teachers? Or they ain't so, been we do have that now. Um, mm-hmm. We offer tutoring after school mm-hmm. for students who need, you know, a little extra help. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something that we did start this mm-hmm. year. For sure, for sure. What's something new that you want to start that you haven't gotten to yet? You do a lot of things. You got mm-hmm. the EP dropping next year. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The dance to you teaching. Like what's something, if anything, that you want to start that, you know what I'm saying, you haven't even, you know what I'm saying, did yet? Mm-hmm. I would say to start back my music. Okay. Okay. Yes. We have EP dropping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Candace Bridges, uh, the EP, <laughs> six songs. <laughs> we going to see. We going to see. <laughs> you know, what's your definition of success? When you look at success, when you 50 years old, mm-hmm. like how do you, what, what, what would define success for you? Um, defining success mm. for me would be. consistency Mm -hmm. you know success is not giving up Mm -hmm. you know because for me it's like it's when you're down that's what determines like your outcome it's Mm -hmm. like okay if you do have a bad you know no one showed up for class are you just gonna give up Mm -hmm. or are you gonna continue to push forward and do what you gotta do like to promote it you Mm -hmm. know um so definitely consistency um, continuing to educate yourself. For sure. Got to. Keep the um, education good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a, no, that's a fact, though. I mean, he was talking about some stuff. He was saying he was watching something about World War II and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's always, you know, good to, you know what I'm saying, go back in your history books and stuff oh, yes. and continue on. It's, it's never too late to learn something. Like, you, yes. no matter how old you are, you can learn some shit. That is true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, definitely consistency, um, education. Mm hmm. It's just, it's a lot when it comes to success. What about money? Is it a certain dollar mo- amount that you want that is going to pinpoint if you're successful? Or it's just like, I'm doing something I love, so... I money. would involve money with success, mm. but you do have to be smart with it, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't be successful and you got all this money and you don't know what to do with it. For sure. You know? You want to be smart with it. Mm. So, definitely that, too. Okay. Now, this is two... Po- uh, what's the last album you listened to that you enjoyed? <clears throat> Part one. Last album? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I did an album. 
<laughs> you 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 a playlist person or just like playlist? Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. So you ain't you ain't, you ain't no album person. Huh? Not really. <laughs> I haven't listened to an album in a minute. Man, what's the last? <laughs> all right, on the way here, what's the last song you listened to or last artist? Um, whatever was on the radio. Oh, you a radio person? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm honestly not a radio person. Though. Yeah. I usually put my Apple Music on and just let it play. Yeah yeah. yeah. Ninety seven. Yeah, yeah. Saying, yeah. <laughs> I was just saying, it's like if I'm thinking about someone. And it was Chris Brown. Yeah. It was Chris Brown. Um, what was on? She want that lovey dovey. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, told you you can sing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you mentioned Cash Doll being somebody you would tell your people about. Mm -hmm. She dropped a project, you know, saying not too long ago, and you know, saying, uh, it was a um, mixtape. Mm -hmm. She got a song called Struggling. Mm -hmm. What's What's something that you remember struggling on as far as like in life and shit, like? as a young or just like a young adult um i like to take titles from people stuff and just that's why i asked I that like question that. i like yeah. that i would say last year mm -hmm. so yeah 2022 mm -hmm. i went through a lot of stuff like mm -hmm. financially uh physically mentally i was just like oh my god mm -hmm. um i was struggling yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was really struggling but all in all, like, I kept my head up. Mm -hmm. Like, I try my best to keep myself motivated and to keep going. Yeah. And, you know, figure some things out. For sure. My mom, she was a big help with that, too. Because I was just like, man, this <laughs> is not how life is supposed to be. Hell no, never. Yeah, hell no. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Track now, she got Laugh Out Loud, LOL. What's the last thing you laughed out loud about? Like, for real. Not just, like, I'm typing Laugh Out Loud, but I'm not laughing. Um, <laughs> Cause, like, yeah, like, I, I tell my wife, like, you ain't. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. What was the last thing I laughed at? This person right here, yeah. he's a goofy person. <laughs> like, the stuff that he do, I just be like, and mm. it cracks me up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> now, uh, legit, it is you. <laughs> <laughs> legit. At what point did you feel like, man, my business, like, what I do, this shit is legit? Um, and then just a thought process. It's like, look, for real. When them new clients come in mm -hmm. from nowhere, yeah, and they be like, "Oh yeah, I looked you up on Google." I'll be like, "Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is legit. Yeah. Now I'm out here." <laughs> yes, five stars. <laughs> Hell yeah, all hype. What's something that's all hype that you like? Shit, I don't see what the like, I don't see what the all hype is about. What's something that you don't believe in the hype? Like everybody else do. Um. Following trends. I mean, yeah. them, them trends. People like, Candace, why don't you do this? Do yeah. that. I don't like following trends. What's the hype in that? For like, sure. Let me do me. Let me be different. Yeah. Last one. Add it up. When, 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 what was your first big payday from dan from like, teaching dance? And you're like, that shit, add that shit up. Hell yeah. I'm getting out. I'm out here. Got a nice uh, little check. When I worked with one of the artists, he mm -hmm. actually paid me and my sis what we was worth. Okay. And that was like my biggest yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Yeah, we in the hood, y'all. It's granddad coming downstairs. We, <laughs> we still going with the shit, though. <laughs> Hell yeah, we still going with the junk, though. You know what I'm saying? Granddad, you know, just chilling and shit, dog. What's up, cuz? <laughs> now, at the end of the day, how do Kansas want to be remembered? Um, That's a good one. Hell yeah, you know. I want to be remembered as the that beautiful soul. Like, mm -hmm. I can just light up a room. Any room I walk in, I'm always smiling. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a lovable person. It would be all good things. Okay. All right. Now, I got this one thing. We we at the end. It's all like little funny things or whatever. Like, okay. So, I got this one segment called Too Early, Too Late, or Right on Time. Now, I got these questions not knowing, you know what I'm saying, that you do with your boyfriend's coming. So, <laughs> don't be don't be mad because. <laughs> now, Too Early, Too Late, or Right on Time. Okay. Your first relationship. Was it Too Early, Too Late, or Right on Time? It was Too Late. Okay. First relationship too late. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, my job was kind of too, no. <laughs> no, I was early. I had an early relationship. Early. I was, yeah, we was like, we was. Uh, well, I was in what eighth grade. We mm -hmm. broke up when I was nineteen. Okay. Thought we was gonna get married and everything. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> we broke up. That. You sh long yeah, she should went to Michigan. Nigga, you should went to Michigan State, cause. <laughs> well, no, I'm married now. You know, scratch that. <laughs> I'm happy for you. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Starting your dance biz business, mm -hmm. your dance studio. Was it too early, too late, or right on time? Right on time. Okay, okay. Moving out your parents' house. Too early, too late, or right on time? Um, 
I'm gonna say it was it was right on time because it was about that time. Okay, <laughs> leaving a messed up relationship. Did you leave it too early, too late, or right on time? Too late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First job, too late, too early, or too early, too late, or right on time. Um. I'm going to say right on time because hmm. I was 16 and got my first job. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Finding out Santa Claus wasn't real. <laughs> too early, too late, or right on time. Too late. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm, seven, I'm, I'm thinking about like, <laughs> like I'm going to let that nigga live. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. First, uh, now, now you can sit here figuring out life. Mm-hmm. Too early, too late, or right on time. Listen, every day you're figuring out life. No, for sure. So, yeah. I'm going to say all well, three. Okay. <laughs> like, now, this one, I got this in the thing. I got to ask if you don't, if you could pass. Okay. A sex, too early, too late, or right on time. A what? Sex. S-E-X. <laughs> I mean, it depends. Yeah, because my job was too late. I thought it was too late. Like, <laughs> too damn. Late. I was the last one on my crew. But then when I think about it, I probably wasn't the last one. I think they was they was lying. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes yeah. people do be, you know, flossing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yep. <laughs> I'm going to say Pass. too late. Okay. All right. Too late. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> now, this one is, uh, what's the name? Uh, um, what's worse? All right? Okay. What's worse? Finding out your, you adopted? Oh, no, no, find out your siblings adopted mm-hmm. or find out your parents ain't your real parents. Ooh, finding out my parents, not my real parents. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a little bit worse? Yes. All right, all right. Like, dang. <laughs> what's, what's worse? Let me get to it. What's worse? Your kids catch you having sex or you catching your parents having sex? <laughs> catching my parents having sex. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, well, I call my parents plenty of times. We, we stayed in one bedroom, so I had no choice. I had to go oh, bathroom. Man. Like, <laughs> all right, all right. What's worse, um, yo, yo, your ex, your homegirl, yo, 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 damn, I'm, I'm starting like a motherfucker. <laughs> What's worse, yo, 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 you getting cheated on, yo, yo, your dude cheating on you with your homegirl, okay, or your dude cheating on you with your ex? <laughs> That's messed up both ways. Hey, it's pretty bad. I ain't talking about you, cuz. I'm me... just an imaginary person. Okay, so my ex cheating on me with no, my homegirl, your current. Person that you with, not you. This is okay. an imaginary person. This okay. is an old imaginary. Okay. The person you with is cheating on you with your homegirl, mm-hmm. or cheating on you with your ex. What's a worse? What's worse between those two? I'm gonna say it's my <laughs> my homegirl because evidently my homegirl we yeah. are supposed to be. Here. I don't know, but it's still both. <laughs> it's still both though. It's both. Like yeah, it's, it's bad, you yeah. went to my ex and my homegirl. Just say the, the homegirl. <laughs> Yeah, you glad he's not into that. <laughs> <laughs> the home girl. No, what's worse, down from getting shot or down from getting stabbed? Oh, I feel like getting stabbed is like real slow. Hell yeah. Like yeah, that's for sure. Painful. Hell yeah, hell yeah. What's worse, somebody talking through a movie or somebody telling you the ending? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say. <laughs> Okay, it's both, but telling me the ending. Yeah, like, that's I'm paying my money. Let me watch the movie. Hell yeah. <laughs> now, you got kids. What's worth? What's worse? I said, what's worth? What's <laughs> worse? Not having money on Christmas or not having money on their birthday? Dang. Not having money on their birthday. That's a special day. I always say, I said Christmas because really? depending on when their birthday is, if it's summertime, you can just make some shit up. Christmas, I mean, you going yeah. back to school, like, everybody got their little new stuff on, you like, what up? <laughs> I ain't getting nothing, like, birthday, you come, you can kind of make something up, like, you can get some cheap cupcakes and some ice cream and... Just, okay, and Christmas. Yeah, yeah, have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me change. <laughs> What's worse, failing at something or not starting? Not starting. What's worse, breaking up in person or breaking up, breaking up over a text? Text. All right. What's worse, find out your mate cheated on you through text or in action? Dang, these some good ones. <laughs> <laughs> in action, cause if I see it, oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse, being a tall nigga with short arms, or being a short nigga with tall legs? <laughs> like you got this, like this part little, but the legs long, like. <laughs> um. <laughs> No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then you said tall with short arms? Yeah, T Rex and that mud like, you know what I'm saying? 
That's weird. <laughs> Y'all can't even cut the one, just nigga. Them, nigga. What was worse out of them two? And what was the short? Uh, short, short. Uh, you know, what I'm saying short with uh, long legs. So this part little as hell, but like the leg is long. I'm gonna just say tall, tall right. with a short arm. Last one. What's worse, titties with no nipples or nipples with no titties? <laughs> 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 I'm gonna say the second one. Okay. No, no, yeah, no nipples. That's for a rapper. What's worse, wearing fake jewelry or wearing fake designer clothes? Wearing fake jewelry. I hate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate that. And they be flossing too. <laughs> hey, yeah. But no, hey, this the end. it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? This is your first podcast. And trust me, when you go on another one, you're gonna be like, oh, it wasn't like shots. <laughs> you already know what it is. Now, I stole this from um All the Smoke. If you if uh, if you had the choice to pick somebody to be on the podcast, who would it be? But you gotta help me get that person. Cash down. Are you gonna help me? I'm gonna help. You. <laughs> I'm saying, all right, man. We, we gonna go, help each other. We on it. We on it. I'm gonna make her, sure she comes to your studio and dance. There you go. That's what I need. Hell yeah. <laughs> now tell people where they can find you on social media. How can they get in contact as far as like they want to come to some classes, all that good stuff. Okay, so you can find me on social media at Sip and Stilettos LLC, mm -hmm. and then also Be The Best You Studios. Mm -hmm. um, you can also check out my website, BeTheBestYouStudios.com, for all my classes, mm -hmm. and my contact number is 586-277-9181. For sure, for sure, for sure. And then, don't call her at day. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> anything you want to leave the people with some positive, a positive message or anything? Um, my motto is Be The Best You. In mm. everything you do, and also yeah. shout out to the bay PBL dot paint. Make sure y'all follow him. Oh, yeah, if you need that yeah. epoxy yeah. done. That's what's up. Hell yeah, get get get, get them some money, man. Shit, we all need it. <laughs> we all need it. But uh, yeah, make sure if y'all watching this right now, make sure y'all like, subscribe, and comment. Do that shit, man. Go on the Apple Podcast. Make sure y'all leave a review. Make sure y'all leave a comment. Tell us what y'all like, what y'all don't like, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, best podcast in the city. If it, you know, what I'm saying ain't no competition for this. We don't see that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody. Episode 182, Candace Bridges, or she a teacher, Miss Bridges, or Candace the coldest. Right. <laughs> we out. <laughs>